Hello, it's Christine Stitch All The Things. Today I wanted to take just a few minutes, uh, do a short video, um, and talk a little bit about my Poison Garden uh, my Sh by Chatelaine Designs. Just give a little update and a few thoughts on how this piece is coming along. I'm not very far in it. I'm really only in this center part right here where it kind of looks like a diamond shape. Um, that's as far as I've gotten at this point. Um, but I've been showing this piece in the last, uh, on Instagram lately and uh, in the last floss tube video. And I've had several people say, hey, I'm going to buy that uh, because you're showing it. It's a beautiful piece. Definitely buy it. Um, and then some people ask me, is it overwhelming? So I wanted to address that because is it overwhelming? No. And yes, all at the same time. Um, this is where I am right now. I should show that. It's actually upside down. Uh, good tip. Um, I think Angel, Girl with a Needle, I think that's her name. Uh, uh, she's the one who I saw stitch an arrow facing up right in the center. I don't think you can see it very well on my thing, but I did that. It's in white. Um, there's a big old bead that goes right in the center. I'm not putting that bead on until the end. Um, if you'll notice, there's a lot of white blank spaces there. Big tile beads go there. I'm, I'm not putting those on right now. Okay, so when you first get, I'm just going to hold it like this because it looks the same no matter which way. This is Belladonna, by the way. Um, when you get a Chatelaine pattern, depending on the pattern, um, how big it is, you're going to get a lot of data at once. Um, it's overwhelming if you're used to just a regular cross stitch pattern with a key and maybe a couple instructions um, on, you know, what floss color to use for back stitching. This is unlike any pattern I've ever seen. I will highly recommend, highly recommend you do not buy a paper copy. You buy a PDF if they're available. The PDFs, there is such detail in these patterns. You really need to be able to blow them up, to expand them. And I've done that many times just to see the detail. Um, you, PDF all the way. Now the PDF, this pattern, I, and when I'm talking, uh, I've only got one. It's just this one. So I'm only talking in relation to Poison Garden. Don't have any of the other patterns. Uh, the reason for that, there's two others I really wanna get. The next one will be Butterfly Lace Mandala. I will not get it until I finish this because I invested a lot of money in the kit um, and I wanna make sure I finish this before I invest money in another kit. Okay, you open up the pattern and you have, of course, her introductory page. Um, and then you have the floss list. And that seems really, really overwhelming. There are, let me get my floss list. Okay, so when you get your floss list, I actually highlighted mine. But I have three papers and they all look like this. And the first time I looked at the pattern, I was like, what? It took me probably two evenings to go through the pattern and understand what's happening. Okay, so there's one row, all these symbols, these are all just the normal floss colors called throughout. She has headings up here. These are the different kinds of flosses. This one is Karen Water Lilies. So then you go down. These are all the flosses in the Karen Water Lilies. Then the next one are the wildflowers. She's got one down here in the wildflowers. See, they're all categorized, but there's no lines. So at first you're like, what? why is everything all over the page? They're really categorized neatly. Uh, there's nothing in whatever this is, Mill Hill Crayon. Um, it actually says crayon. Uh, they're probably the Mill Hill beads. Um, um, seed beads. And then something else. I didn't have any on this page, so they didn't get highlighted. Then over here... I believe that's a dinky dye pearl and 
over here is the list. So basically, th these are, um, I think, Rainbow Gallery. Um, these are the Petite Treasure Braids, so they're right here. Um, over here are the Silk LeMay Braids. So she has them categorized. So when you look at these symbols and you're seeing the names over here, you're like, wait, I don't understand. What, I've got the name, she split them up by type, all right? Down here, it took me forever to figure this out. As a matter of fact, I'm going to admit that I just figured this out the other night and I went, oh. I never really paid attention. These are cross stitch over one in these colors because they repeat. They're the same as up here because these are the colors you're going to cross stitch over one in. Yeah, that's how detailed this is. These are all the back stitching. I didn't even highlight this because your back stitching colors, um, there are individual instructions for, so I didn't even worry about those. Except for to identify when I had one extra floss and I'm like, oh, wait, it's not in the floss list. Where is it? It was in the back stitch list. So yeah, know that. And then of course, all of the beads, extra crystals, stuff like that, beads and treasures. Okay, that's the first thing you're gonna run across. Then you're going to get to the pattern. You have to scroll all the way through the entire PDF to understand what's happening. The first set of pattern you're gonna get is black and white. Then you're gonna get an entire other set of the pattern in color. And this is where all of your colored uh, back stitching lines, all of that are. I stitch off the colored ones. It really helps me keep everything in order, figure out where I am. And then beyond the pattern, is Martina's instructions. She'll tell you the order you should be stitching everything in. I think her order is do the, the flosses, the metallics, the special threads or the specialty stitches, and then beads. I do that, but I, I kind of cheat. I don't like, I'm not stitching all of the, the regular stitches, the regular cross stitches first. I'm not doing that on the whole pattern. I choose an area and I say within this area here, I'm going to stitch all the regular cross stitches. Then I'm going to do all the metallics. Then I'm going to do all the specialty stitches and then I add the beads. And that, and then, and I really did. I started with this little, this square first. I'll put a picture up and in that area, that's what I worked in. And then the next one I did, I think was here. And I'm sorry, I keep holding this down low. The next area I stitched, I believe was this area. And I did that, I, that her instructions, cross stitches, metallics. Uh, I'll have to look it up. I hope I'm saying it right. Cross stitch, metallics, specialty stitches, beads. And then I just did the exact same thing in this area all the way around. And then I'll start in these corners. That's, that's how I tackle this. Now, when you look at the pattern, someone asked me, is it overwhelming or intimidating or whatever the question was? Yeah, it really can be. So what I do is I look at the pattern because when you look at it as a whole, you're really going to be like, I, I can't, that's too much. I can't do this. Yes, you can. You have to take it one stitch at a time. You have to take... It's like my husband always says, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's how you have to do this. And I'm telling you this experience of stitching this is the best stitching experience I have ever had. And I'm only this far in. It's well worth it. Um, but one bite at a time, y'all. Um, I've already looked at this and I've already decided next. Next, I'm gonna focus on the corners. And there is a lot going on in these corners here. There are metallics. There are like two, two, three different specialty stitches. I believe there's Rhodes. I believe there's uh, Algerian Eyelets. Both of those totally easy once you get them down, I promise. Um, and then there are rice stitches. Again, easy. You just have to follow the instructions. Her rice stitches have three different colors. To me, that's exciting because it's different. Everything is different. And you get to see as you watch these elements, each new element added, it just 
blows my mind. I mean, really and truly, I'm just blown away by it. But I've already decided, okay, the border for however this corner is done here is done in whatever, whatever color. I can't remember now. I think it's a silver. So I'm going to get the outer border done. And then I'm going to work everything inside. And I follow what Martina says. Regular cross stitches. I think metallic. Specialty stitches beads. And then um, actually there is a bit of on somewhere in here. Maybe it's even the inner. No. So, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. There are actually stitches back stitching floating over the top of the stitches in gold i believe i'm super excited to get there but when you look at the pattern and you see all that going on in one area uh sometimes your brain can go and like you know freak out a bit don't just remember you tackle one element at a time you can't stitch all that at the same time so Enjoy the process. Don't become overwhelmed by it. I will tell you there is a fantastic resource on Facebook, the Chatelaine Designs Facebook group. I'm going to link that below. Um, there are so many people that have already stitched things. Uh, sometimes visual learners, all you need is a picture to see how someone else did it. There are tons of pictures. You just go in the group. I do this all the time. Um, I had some struggle with um, some of these eyelets down here, diamond eyelets. My struggle was a long line off the diamond eyelet on the pattern. I didn't know, is that a backstitch line? Is it part of the diamond eyelet? I went to the Facebook group and looked at all the pictures. And in the end, I decided that I was going to stitch it as one long line. And you can see them. I'll turn it this way. They're in the, in the diamond corners. See if you can find those long stitches. It looks like stair steps right here and then down oops I have to trace it with my finger and see it at the same time right in here I decided I'm going to do those as long stitches because in Martina's instruction she wrote stitch the diamond eyelets there she didn't say at the after you stitch this diamond eyelet back stitch she just said they're diagonal or yeah um diamond eyelets. So because there were no other instructions, I decided to make them long stitches. Um, and I looked at other people's pictures before I made that decision to see how did other people do it. Um, one person didn't have them. Uh, someone else actually stitched that long line in two stitches and someone else had them long like me and I decided I like the long stitch the best. And so that's the one I did. I will tell you, um, all the Chatelaine stitchers out there are the most helpful people. I actually started this because I watched Deborah, um, Arizona Needleworker, and she was talking about her medieval town mandala. I think that's the one she was working on. And she just said, you can do this. And when she said that, and I've been wanting this pattern, I thought, she's right, I can. Um, and, and I did. I got overwhelmed with the reading the pattern. The pattern is the overwhelming part, um, but it's not hard. And so I will encourage you, if you've been wanting to try one of these, you don't think you can, you definitely can. And you don't have to start with a huge piece. You don't have to start with Poison Garden, uh, but I don't start with anything easy. Um, but there, there may still be a free chart on the website. I think they're small. There's been a couple of free releases over the years. I'm not sure if Martina's daughter still has a freebie up there. Um, but I'm telling you, the group, the people will help you if you have any questions. You can't read the pattern, understand the pattern. Everyone will come to your aid. Um, so if you feel like a challenge, if you want a piece to learn and grow from, teach you some specialty stitches, um, expose you to different fibers because I'm telling you these fibers are amazing uh, the beadwork it's completely worth it and as a stitcher I cannot tell you how happy I am that I decided to go ahead dive in and stitch this piece because every single stitch is a joy every element added blows my mind um yeah I just I am stunned by this piece. People have made comments like I just could stare at it or it's just so beautiful. I can't believe it. I feel the exact same way and I'm the one stitching it. I just add an element and Martina's 
genius, her mind, how she combined all these things together blows my mind every single time. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if this is just kind of superfluous, uh, if it's just a video that doesn't really help anybody. I sort of hope it does. These are just my thoughts. Um, but I do want to say, because people have asked me and then said, because they saw my video, they're going to buy a Chatelaine. I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, if you do get overwhelmed by the pattern, please message me. Um, I will be happy to help you read parts of it. Um, I know the group would be, um, if you know someone else stitching a Chatelaine, don't let it discourage you. Don't, don't end up just saying, never mind, I can't do it. You totally can. How do you stitch a Chatelaine? One stitch at a time. Okay, with that, I'm going to close this video out. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me today. Um, I hope this gave you some information to at least mull over and think about, if anything. Um, until next time, bye!